Hi, welcome. This afternoon we're going to be looking at operations analytics and the power that it can provide organizations to identify problem time periods uh, as as critical incident uh, incidents are occurring. Um, in our environment, we had a live event actually this weekend. We had uh, a couple disks fail on a Oracle instance, and we're going to take a look at what operations analytics was able to aggregate for us across all of our enterprise monitoring systems. So in this environment, we have some syslog uh, events being collected. These are coming straight out of the, the application. The application in this case is HPSM for HP Service Manager. It's a help desk system that we leverage here internally. The, the monitoring systems in place around this, around this application range anywhere from uh, a number of HP software products. Uh, HP uh, BSM and its uh, BPM component are monitoring some application performance uh, for us. There is uh, obviously syslogs coming out of it. Uh, these are application logs that we are, are leveraging the, the syslog transport mechanism uh, to get those centralized into a central syslog server, uh, aggregated into operations analytics. We also have um, BSM's ops bridge uh, messages, uh, that component sometimes called OMI. Uh, those events and messages are coming in. We're gonna take a look at those. So this particular occurrence uh, or incident occurred over the weekend. So um, here it is, it's Monday evening when I'm recording this and the, the incident occurred sometime over the weekend. And we're gonna show how operations analytics can be used in order to uh, identify that time period and start to identify the, the actual root cause of the occurrence. Um, I'm going to set this time period back to approximately one week because I know that the system started having uh, issues sometimes, sometime over the weekend. Um, so we're going to take a look at this. And one of the things that Operations Analytics has built into it is this uh, log analytics functionality. Now what this does is take a look at all of the log entries that are coming in across uh, the system. Whether they're coming from syslog or they're coming from some other internal logging mechanism, um, it takes those and then it runs a uh, an algorithm against them to identify significant messages. Now these significant messages can be configured and can be tailored. Um, we'll just take a look real quick at what currently is tailored, so I can show you what is uh, what got triggered on. So the only one in here that we Greenlight have added is this incident library. Um, that's the expression, incident library. We wanted to signify that that is important. Um, and we configured that uh, a number of weeks ago when we stood up this operations analytics environment. And that's given an importance 10. Um, the other things to, to note in this particular view is the, are these Aura messages, only because there's a, an Oracle issue that we identified through using this process. Um, and those out of the box get classified as importance 5, because these could range anywhere from um, unimportant uh, Aura messages that come through, uh, you know, whether there's uh, an issue getting table, getting a, a select statement, or the select statement is running wrong, long. Those sorts of things get classified as or or messages, ORA. Or we could get things such as uh, serious Oracle failures, uh, TNS listener down. That sort of thing could also come through as as ORA messages. So in in general, out of the box, they classify these as importance five. That's middle of the road, if you will. Um, so that's kind of how uh, log analytics is configured. Um, if we take a look at this, and I went back over a week, so from February 9th, 2015 through February 16th, 2015, um, we can start to look back, and you can see Operations Analytics group these critical, most significant message groups into um, certain events. So we can see here there's some issues with the incident library is down, right? And that's one of those one of those uh, sp specific tags that I put in to the system to indicate that, hey, the incident library from a knowledge management base in this particular application is down. Continuing on uh, on to 2.13, uh, right, February 13th, we can get to a point where we start to see some events here also for incident library being down. Um, so that's all great and wonderful. We fully expected that to happen. Those are really not all that significant. In this case, what we really want to cue in on is this uh, grouping that has an N in it. It's not a critical message like these ones up here are, um, but it's a N standing here for new. You can see the new indicator there. Um, and this occurred uh, roughly 1.40 in the afternoon on the 13th. So let's take a look at that and see what we come up with. So by merely clicking on it, I get pulled back a, a list of all of the uh, most significant messages. There are 20 of them. And we can start to break these down and see what, what is going on from these most uh, significant messages perspective. We can see here that there was a weighting of null column in an aggregate function that showed up on the 13th. That was the one occurrence that uh, triggered that particular dot. But as we continue to scroll through here, we can see that uh, on the 15th at 6.24 in the morning, we have uh, TNS no listener. Well, that seems extremely bad. If you're any level of an Oracle uh, database person, you know that a TNS um, listener is the mechanism that, that allows connections to be made into an Oracle database. We start to see that those uh, messages are starting to 
to get thrown. Uh, those perhaps a little more familiar with the uh, Oracle um, database may also key in on this little message here that says end of file on communication channel. That also is significantly bad. And we can see these two get correlated uh, at 6.24 a.m. on the 15th. As we click through these, we can uh, look at the message count over time down here in the bottom right-hand corner. We can see that there were um, a significant number of these messages uh, between a couple of dates here, February 15th, uh, just after midnight through 9 a.m. There was, uh, looks like 11 total messages, um, and then a second grouping on the 16th as well. Um, so we can see that there's a significant number of these that are occurring that, that could be a challenge. And if we take a look at this, we can see that there's 17 of them over here. Um, Here's another TNS uh, event that we can see, this one happening on the 16th. All of these signify a bad uh, situation, right? Especially from an application that's running uh, two to three tier stack with a web, web server, an app server, and a database tier. Um, obviously, if the database tier goes down, the web app, uh, the web tier and the, and the app tier don't ha really have anything to do. There's no data there to serve out. So we can start to see here that log analytics directed us straight into these messages. We can immediately see that the database was down. There's an issue connecting the database over an extended period of time over the weekend here. If we go back to the dashboard, we can start to take a look at some of the other uh, monitoring components that all get uh, pulled into Ops Analytics and aggregated here on this uh, HP Service Manager dashboard. We can see transaction network time. Um, and if we track this, we can see that we get pretty consistent results. Granted, it's up and down depending on the um, you know, the actual BPM process that, that's occurring. Um, but we can see that really 6 a.m., that 6 a.m. time period on the 24th, that really seems to be, or sorry, on the 14th, that really seems to be a, a critical time period here. Um, and we can see that we just stopped getting data at that point. Well, that signifies the application was down. Um, of course, we can identify that it also was down because of uh, the Oracle messages we saw here a minute ago, but just showing the, the correlation across the time periods here. Um, looking at the total count of HPSM log messages, we don't particularly see uh, anything important here. We see a, a dip or a decrease, um, which is uh, a, a tendency to, to imply that something's wrong with the application because historically we can see that we were running, um, you know, uh, whatever, give or take a thousand events uh, per this time period. And all of a sudden, here between 2 a.m. and 8 a.m. on the 14th, we dropped a, sig a significant amount. Um, and then obviously here Monday morning we come in, we start troubleshooting, um, our folks start hitting uh, the application and we start trying to, to interact with it um, and troubleshoot it. And we can see that obviously there's a spike of events. I mean, 6,000 events came in, um, you know, roughly 11 a.m. on the 16th. Now it's a Monday morning. So that's us coming into the office, realizing something's not, not quite right. Uh, and we start troubleshooting against the app server itself and, and generating a slew of, of message counts. Continuing on down the dashboard, we can see the HPSM application performance over time. Um, and we can start to see this uh, this trend of the transaction response times. That's what that little, uh, and that's a moving average, I believe. Yep, that's the moving average of the transaction response time. So we can take a look at this. We can see that, yeah, we're, we're running along. We're humming along pretty good um, until hmm, 6 a.m. on the 14th. Of course, that's the, the point in time where we lost some disks on the Oracle server. The application goes unavailable. Obviously, the transaction response times are going to uh, die off at that point. But you can start to see some correlations across these, these dashboards in that capacity. Um, if we uh, come on down to the OMI events from the application web, um, we can see that you know, from the 16th, 16th, we've got some uh, system is unreachable events. That's uh, significantly bad. These are coming from Systems Insight Manager, coming through into BSM uh, and across OMI into Operations Analytics just for viewing so we can get a, a consolidated view across all of this information. Um, we can see lots of different things, error occurred processing of uh, policy for swap utilization. We can see um, more issues on that node. Um, all right, that was a closed event. This one is uh, another system is unreachable. Uh, this is sm swap space used. This is against the web tier. Uh, the web tier is trying to compensate for the app server not exactly functioning correctly. And then a correlated event at the same time, we had a particular um, uh, uh, VM host also go down roughly um, somewhere on the 15th, 16th time period as well. Um, I don't have the exact details, but we can start to see that uh, that, that disk is filling up. There's uh, issues here with metric utilization, uh, percent packets, um, you know, going from a good to error state. That's, you know, um, not particularly a good thing uh, in this case, right? Network communication being critical. Um, here's another sim event. System is unreachable. Uh, control agent on node is now running. 
All right, but the message agent is not running. That's a symptom of the internal OpenView operations agent that's on there. But we can start to see these events across uh, multiple monitoring systems, all centrally aggregated inside of operations analytics. And through the power of log analytics, we start to able to identify exactly where the problems were, what was going on, um, and what the root of the problem was, which is really critical, right? Um, an application person, it may take them uh, a significant amount of time to start to dig through these logs in order to identify that there is a TNS issue, right? Or a TNS listener issue, TNS listener not found, could not resolve that sort of thing, could take a application administrator quite a significant amount of time. Um, but as you can see, just in operations analytics, by merely pulling up the dashboard and looking at the most significant messages, bam, it jumped out right at us. We knew exactly what the problem was. We could identify when it started with, as we aggregated the, the details across the monitoring systems that collect in here. So we could really start to get to see that, that level of information. Um, that really is the power of operations analytics. Uh, you set up these dashboards, you get the, the the centralized aggregated view across all of your monitoring systems and really it doesn't matter if you're using HP monitoring systems or if you're using um, you know CA monitoring systems or uh, some variety of vendor uh, systems to collect all this data you can collect it all centralize it all inside of operations analytics and start to get the power here um, of log analytics and operations analytics that about does it uh, for this time that seemed like a, a rather long uh, YouTube video, uh, but you get the idea and you get start to get an understanding of what the true power of operations analytics is.